Praise the Lord, saints. Pastor Glenda Gray from Zion Ministries coming to you on this seventh day, which is now uh, Christmas Day, reminding you of the seven saints of God, of Jesus Christ, as he hanged upon the cross. Our last saying comes from Luke chapter 23, verse 46, and it says, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. But I want to read a few other scriptures, beginning with verse number 44 from that same place in Luke. Uh, it says, And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said those, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. Now, this is listed as the last saying of Jesus Christ um, uh, with, in the eyes of Luke. Of course, we know that uh, when we look at John, uh, John has it as it is finished. Uh, but both of these really work hand in hand. For Jesus had completed the work that God had sent him to do upon this earth. And now before he ascended into heaven, he is uh, letting the Father know that he is um, giving his spirit over to God. God, I'm in your hands. Uh, and so we know that there is no better place to be than in the hands of God. By the time we come into this place, they have uh, allowed Jesus to suffer so much upon that cross, uh, a thorn, a crown, a crown, a crown of thorns upon his head, uh, vinegar instead of water. They pierced him in his side. They've done all of these things. They shamed him, spat on him, mocked him. They've done all of these things, but yet he stayed upon the cross that we might have a right to the tree of life. And so he is giving up the ghost. He came upon this earth. He lived. He suffered. We, we, we have a Savior who knows the things, the temptations that we have gone through. Hebrews reminds us of that. Uh, Hebrews reminds us of so many things that, we, that uh, help, will help us on this journey. So if you get an opportunity, go over and read uh, the book of Hebrews. It's almost like a, um, a miniature Bible <laughs> in one book. But, but God said we're to read all of his word. And, and that's why I encourage you always to start from Genesis. Genesis and go over to Revelations uh, because you cannot read a book in the middle and understand everything. But when you read it from the beginning on to the end, then you'll, then you'll have the complete story. So here Jesus uh, is getting ready to ascend uh, in, uh, into heaven. But before he does, he goes down into captivity and he does the work that God has called him to do. You know, um, many talk about the fact that, uh, you know, the story says that Jesus uh, was in the ground for three days. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself likens what was going to happen to him uh, to Jonah in the belly of the whales for three days and three nights. Now, there are many skeptics who try to come in and try to uh, nitpick the word, but God's word is true. God's word, if, if, if you know that God is real, like I do, you know that God's word is true. And so everything that God has in his word for us is there to help us to I find our way back to him. So as as Jesus is hanging up on that cross and he's uh, committed his spirit unto God, uh, he has finished the work that God has called him to do on this side. He has much work still to be done. As a matter of fact, before he ever uh, ascends into heaven, he first goes down into hell and he preaches preaches to those in captivity, and then he walks around this earth. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of, of, about the road to Emmaus, 
for as he he's coming back uh, there into Jerusalem after he has been hanged upon the cross. He has risen and he's done the work that God has called him to do. And now he comes and he's walking with two of his disciples. They only call one disciple by name. So God lets us know the name's not really important. The story is. And it talks about that as Jesus was walking with them that he asked them what was going on. And they said, oh, you must not be from around here because uh, he, they started telling about the story about there was a man, his name was Jesus, and we thought he was the Christ. But then they hanged him. And then Jesus said, oh, you a foolish heart. Was not I, was not the Savior to be to suffer? Uh, in other words, you know, we people were looking for Jesus to come, not on that little lowly, mule but to come on a white horse you know jesus didn't come the way with riches and that's something about how we look at this because we know that when uh, the children of israel came out of egypt god allowed their their neighbors to give them many things and so when they went into the promised land they had had a lot of things uh, and they used them for the building of the temple but they sinned and turned away from God that all of these things were taken uh, and we know the last of it was taken by, by Nebuchadnezzar when they were when God sent them into captivity for 70 years so now when we come into the New Testament we don't see all these people with all the riches and, and the glory behind them uh, you know instead we see lowly people coming in the way that Jesus came. We see um, all of the disciples that Jesus called. They were all uneducated people, uh, the, just ordinary people that God took and did extraordinary things because the ordinary people could not try to get the glory for themselves. But by them being ordinary, God got the glory. And so we should always, in all that we do, keep our humbleness that God may give the, get the glory, as Jesus did. He, he stayed humble in his walk. And he, as we read uh, on yesterday, how he talked about how, God, I glorify you, Lord. It was all about God. All the work he did, God came first. And he came as an example to us that we need to know that in all that we do on our journey here, that we must keep God first. And if we keep God first, God is going to be with us as we go through our trials, go through our tribulations. He's going to make a way out of no way. He's a forgiving God. And so when we put God first, we already know that everything, not some things, but everything will be all right. All of us ought to be right now uh, commending our souls to God. Even while we're still on this side, command our souls to God. Let God take care of us. Let God show us the way. For he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. God is the good shepherd. He is the shepherd. We are his sheep. And he said that my sheep will know my voice. That means that when we give uh, our soul over to God, that we submit our will. And be just like Jesus when Jesus said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And so we've got to learn how to be strong in the word of God, but yet stay humble in our walk with God. And that's, a lot of preachers have to remember that because like Saul, Saul was the first king. He was so humble. He started out humble, but then he began to believe he was really king, not realizing that there's only one king. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. When we remember these things, when we walk with God, behind God. Let him not be our co-pilot, but let him be our pilot. Let him guide us. Let him lead us. Let him tell us what to do. And he does it through his word. Then we already know that everything is going to be all right. Even if we're going through, we remember that God said he has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. But he also said that I'll be with you as long as you are with me. So with me, which means that we reject him, he's going to reject us. But God doesn't want to reject us. He could have rejected us when we messed up in the Garden of Eden. When we said, I believe Satan over God, but he didn't. Even before he made us, Peter reminds us, 
God had a plan that if we messed up in the Garden of Eden, that we would have a way back to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And that plan went into effect the moment that God cast us out of the Garden of Eden. We see it in, in the last verse of chapter 3 of Genesis, where it says that when God cast us out, that he placed outside cherubim and a flaming sword that turns every way to keep the way to the truth to the tree of life. And we're all trying to get back to that same tree that we ignored when we were in the Garden of Eden. We're trying to get back so we can eat from that tree and live forever. But the only way we can do it is now that we have this second chance to get it right, that we don't mess up. As Hebrews reminds us, let us not fall short of the promise because the the uh, the uh, word was preached to the Israelites just like we're trying to preach to you now, but they received it without faith. And we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why it's so important to never allow anyone to tell you that all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. For the scripture says that as you're going through to put on your shield of faith, and if your shield of faith is only the size of a black eyed pea, you've already lost that battle. But when you have faith, as the scripture says, as a mustard seed, and your faith grows and grows and grows, because the more you walk with God, the more you know what God can do, then now I have put on the whole armor of God, the whole shield of faith. And now I'm ready to take out the, the arrows of faith out of, out of my quiver and be able to shoot them at the devil and defeat the devil in all that he's trying to do. As James reminds us, count it all joy when you go through your divers or various temptations, knowing that it's just a trial of your faith. And God is just trying us now to see, will we stay faithful? Jesus said, when I return, will I fa find faith upon this earth? And that's for each one of us. When he comes back, will he find that you have been faithful to the end? For he says that those who hold on to the end shall be saved. So we've got to keep on walking with God and remembering and this. I'm going to say it one more time. Remember that it's not about the gifts up under the tree, but it's about the gift that went upon that tree, Jesus Christ who went up on that cross, became our sins, d suffered for our sins, died for our sins, that we might, and that's the key word, that we might have a right to the tree of life. And the only time we're going to have that right is that we have done what thus says the Lord. So as we uh, remember this day, let us never forget the sacrifice that God made for us, how much he loved us, how much he cared for us, and that it's his desire for all of us to be saved. So think of this Christmas as a time of remembering uh, what God has done for us and what he has in store for us. If we complete this journey according to the words written in his book, that our name may be written in the Lamb's book of life. But Revelation lets us know that in the end, Jesus will come forth with two books as we go into our judgment, each one of us. The first book will be a book of our works. So when somebody says you don't need works, they don't understand. Find you a preacher who knows God, where understands God, where it will not be leading you to the ditch where you will both fall in. But find someone that God has called, the Spirit of the Lord is upon them. For as Jesus said in, in, in Luke uh, chapter 4, the Spirit is upon me because he has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And what is the acceptable year? It is the year in which you do what God has written his word to do, that you will keep the faith you will love one another as God has loved you. And above all, love God. May God bless you. May he keep you. Merry Christmas to all. And may God keep you until we meet again.